Gotcha. Hello everyone and welcome to my coverage of the new seasonal event, the Holiday Joy Fest. There's a lot of new armor, there's a lot of new weapons, well there's one new weapon. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover here and I hope to give you a brief overview of it and tell you how to unlock everything because I don't know, there's just a lot to do right now. It's kind of surprising. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of seasonal events and this one's definitely one of the most generous of them because it gives you so much to do. So let's start by talking to the smithy. I've already unlocked a lot of the things, so we're able to just look at everything you're able to grab from this event. We're going to go to forge equipment, weapons. We're going to jump over to the longsword. You can see this pickaxe on my back. We jump down here. It's a brand new longsword. It's the Minecraft crossover that we've always wanted. Workshop weapon tree, and it gives you this awesome mad scavenger pickaxe. Uh, you can see for its base stats, you have 858 attack white sharpness, a decent amount of white sharpness. You probably want Master's Touch, 30% affinity, and then it's, it's an elementless weapon, but if you wanted to unlock it, you would get the Blast Ailment. We like the Blast Ailment, plus 30 uh, defense bonus is never a big issue, is it? Uh, but it's, it's nice to have it in your pocket, right? Let's compare that to the Nergigante Longsword real fast. So here he is, Nergigante Longsword. Oops, what'd I do? There we go. Nergigante Longsword, it's gonna be 957. That's an extra 100 attack, which is quite a large difference. Also, the filled out white sharpness bar means you don't necessarily have to bring Master's Touch with the Ruinous Extermination. So this allows it to optimize more for damage since the Master's Touch setup, even though it's very efficient, is not the most efficient. Then it doesn't have that bonus 30% affinity like the Demon's Scavenger Pickaxe does, but you know, it's not that hard to obtain 100% affinity in this game. It also doesn't have a locked element. It has dragon element. Okay, so if you're a fighting monster who's real weak to blast or completely resistant to dragon, Ruin and Ergigante's longsword wouldn't have that small dragon advantage that it does. And no defense bonus, but that doesn't matter. But you also notice a small decoration slot. So Demon Scavenger Pickaxe really isn't going to be competing with the meta in my opinion. Yes, it's rarity 11. You'll get an extra augmentation, uh, but it's not going to beat the meta, right? We can take a look at the and remember, we're not even comparing this to the Safajiva weapons. Here's the Wyvern Blade Luna. We got kind of the same deals, just having like 100 more attack. It also comes with a little bonus affinity of 10%, and the 420 poison is already unlocked, and it comes with the small decoration slot. So if you're using the Demon Scavenger Pickaxe, you're using it because you like the way it looks, and it does look awesome. I've played with it. It's a terrific longsword. It does enough damage that you're not going to worry about the damage, okay? So if you want to play with it, you can play with it, but if you're going in for a speed run, you won't be bringing this guy. What about this scarf on my... Oh my god, the scarf looks so anime. That's probably the first thing you noticed was the scarf, not the pickaxe. A lot of people, the moment they saw the scarf, they're like, how do you obtain that? Look at the physics on it. It's got that good anime physics. But the scarf, it's not like a mind-blowing blowing piece of armor, and a lot of people are already calling for it to be made into a piece of layered armor. Let's jump over to the armor slots down here. It's called the Sealed Dragon Cloth. It, you know, it's, it's a scarf. Uh, and you can see it has one level of resentment. Not all builds bring resentment. That's one of the first problems you'll see with it right away. The second thing you notice is it comes with two giant decoration slots. That's not bad. So if you really were trying to build resentment, then this is not a bad helmet. Uh, similar to a lot of the armor we get with this new seasonal event is no set bonus skills on these armors. So Sealed Dragon Cloth doesn't have a set bonus skill. The Duffel Penguin Mask, which I just now mentioned, it doesn't come with an armor skill. It has a fade window. This is going to be kind of like the Wiggler helmet and the Kulu Yuku helmet. It's a joke helmet. It looks terrific, though. I mean, here's Pearl Spring from when the game launched. Remember Pearl Spring? God, Pearl Spring is so much fun. Yeah, so hopefully both of these layered armors, uh, Duffel Penguin Mask, a layered armor, or Sealed Dragon Cloth, the layered armor. This is what people would like for these. And then we have this other thing called the Buff Body. So Buff Body will get you into this tight little Speedo. Uh, for women, it's kind of similar. They're like wearing a swimsuit, basically. And there's no helmet, which means you're going to wear the sealed dragon cloth, right? Because that would be awesome. And over here, you can see the skills are... They're all kind of focused toward damage. But again, there's no set bonus skill. And I'm not a big fan of the chest and the arms. So the chest is better than the arms, I'd say. Agitator 3, Fortify, and 3 small decoration slots. Well, if you don't die, the Fortify never activates. It's kind of just a wasted slot. And then you have the three small decoration slots. Those are nice, but then you just have Agitator 3. It, it actually is not that efficient. There's some really strong chest pieces out there that this has to compete against, and I, considering it doesn't build a set bonus skill, I, that's a big problem for it. Then you have Attack Boost 3 in the giant decoration slot. Similar to the chest, I, 
I don't know how popular this will be. I don't think it will be very popular. Like, I would see people using the chest. I don't think I'll see anyone using the arms. The coil is especially interesting. Three levels of heroics. When you take a look at level three of heroics, you can see that uh, is giving you that extra 100 defense increases defense by 100 points see so it just kind of reached that threshold and if you take it two levels up you get 10 and uh, 5 percent more for attack so it comes up to a total of 15 percent bonus attack power which is a lot of attack by the way it would be interesting to see how this pairs with that horizon zero dawn light bowgun even so yeah you've got agitator and then the legs are also decent as well with attack boost three heroics two and a giant decoration slot so these two the way the coil and the legs i feel actually pair together uh, if you were to wear both of these you would max out heroics you would have agitator two which is pretty easy to finish off agitator and then you'd have attack boost three and you could just bring one more level of attack boost to get you to that attack boost threshold of attack boost four where you get the five percent bonus affinity and then usually people don't go past level four attack boost right because it's diminishing returns so yeah this this is actually pretty interesting here i i think that we might actually see this now you get the buff body armor set from the double raging event quest we'll take a look at all the event quests after we're done talking to the smithy here the duffel penguin mask is pretty easy to obtain you just capture penguins in another event quest and the sealed dragon cloth has a specific fight where you fight uh it's Valkana and valhazak the pickaxe that we see on my back, this is a tempered Bracadios quest. We'll take a look at all the quests, like I said, but this one's a little more confusing. We have the Oolong Alpha. So this is the Joy Fest armor set. This is like, you know, the defining armor set, the, the seasonal armor set. And you can see you build it with the Joyful Ticket. Well, just like in the past where you needed uh, the seasonal event tickets to unlock the armor sets, you kind of just have to log in and get your daily bonus in order to unlock these tickets to build it. And then the other thing you need to be doing is completing your, uh, what are they called, their, their bounties or something like that. You know, you talk to the lady who gives you the bounties and investigations, and she'll have daily bounties for you to work on, and they'll give you joyful tickets as well. And then when you have enough of these, you just kind of build this up. It's not a very good armor set, to be honest with you. Okay, the, the helmet is decent for crit eye, especially if you struggle with crit eye. Oolong hair, and it's probably the best piece of armor in the set, in my opinion. Then we have the, the the vest is for stamina surge. It's very niche, maybe like the bow, the dual blades. Coalescence is niche as well, I'd say. is is one of those skills you only build when you have room for it. Uh, constitution, I don't think is very good at all in this case. And then we have health boost, which is always pretty nice. Uh, there's better ways to build health boost. Uh, for the set bonus skill, we have Joy's Gift and Joy's A Joyful Blessing. It says increases odds of getting special holiday joy rewards and greatly increases odds of getting special holiday joy rewards. What are they talking about? They're talking about the VIP joy tickets. What are VIP joy tickets? They're just harder to obtain tickets. You obtain them by finishing uh, quests that are related to this seasonal event. You have, a, you have a small chance of that just kind of showing up in your rewards. You don't get them all the time. It's driving everyone nuts. So if you want a good chance of getting the VIP tickets, you need to craft this armor set. And then what you need to be doing is the Hunter Helper quest. Do you remember those? We've I've talked about it extensively on my channel. That's where you go into low rank and you go into high rank and you help somebody who has no master rank levels, their master rank zero, you help them finish that low rank, high rank event quest, and then as a special reward, you have a fairly good chance of getting the VIP tickets. And I've heard if you're wearing the Oolong set, is even greater, your odds are even greater. So that would be the fastest way to get the VIP tickets. And the VIP tickets are gonna be used for layered armor. Right, let's take a look at that layered armor real fast. Okay, so we have the Oolong Layered Armor, and you need those VIP Joyful Tickets. Again, they're RNG-based, you have to do the quest related to the holiday, or you could help people in low rank and high rank, and be sure to wear the Oolong Armor when you do this. This will increase your odds of unlocking these VIP Joyful Tickets, right? <laughs> Let's run up and talk about the event quest you have to do to unlock all this stuff. All this stuff. Oh, and I missed showing you the Palco Armor. Should I show you the Palco Armor? Let's, let's show you the Palco Armor first. It's such good looking armor. So you're going to have two pieces of the Palco armor sets, right? Uh, there's going to be a snowman and there's going to be a dragon. Forge equipment. Oh, there's a new pendant as well, I believe. Hold on. So for the pendants, let's do the pendants while we're here. We have Lucky Ti Tiger. And this is using the joyful ticket. But then you can see the VIP joyful ticket gives you different colors. 
So you can kind of, let's, let's test that out. Check that out. Lucky Crimson Tiger. He looks very cute. He looks like a little paper mache sort of, um, what do they call those? Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Pinata? There we go. It looks like a little paper mache pinata. And uh, with the VIP Joyful tickets, you can get, customize it to be a different color. Really cute. That's the pendants. Let's take a look at the Palico equipment real fast as well. We'll jump down here. We have the Shishi Mai set, if I said that right. And this looks so good. Look, the jaw wiggles. Just like the actors who, you know, they do the parade, they do the event with the dragon suit and multiple men are in it. Well, the guy in the front always plays with the jaw. So they've had the jaw wiggling while the cat's inside of it. It's very cute. You get this nice looking weapon as well. What does the weapon do? Is it an ailment weapon? It's a blast weapon. Okay, so it's just do damage. We also have the snow set. So the snow set returns, right? This was in the base game. Well, now you can get the upgraded master set version of it for your cat and this one looks uh, fairly easy to obtain because you're using the joyful ticket you need winter star ticket is that from the past oh my gosh <laughs> i hope you have winter star tickets okay geez louise there's so much to talk about here you know the snowman is in the game now that's where you obtain him as a consumable kind of like the fireworks let's see if i have any snowmen right now i probably do manage items where would it go He'll be in sell items for sure. Would he be a consumable? I don't know if I... I don't know if I have any. <laughs> Hold on. Here it is. Yeah, there we go. Snowman. A giant snowman which you can use to create snowballs given to you when you join the Celiana Fest. Okay, so... You know, you would use this, it would place a snowman on the ground, and then you can get snowballs from it, and you can throw the snowballs at your friends to give them a snowball head. And the game, like, warns you at the beginning of the festival not to abuse this. <laughs> Which is funny, because when they tell me not to abuse it, in my head I go, oh, I'm definitely abusing that. Alright, let's talk to her. We're going to talk about the quest you need to play in order to unlock these things. Post new quest. As you know, during a seasonal event, all of the quests are listed under the events. These are rotating quests. Uh, you know, when the seasonal event ends, you can't do them anymore. So you got to do them now, or you're going to have to wait for the next holiday. Alright, so Duffel Duty is going to give you the Penguin Mask. And it's pretty straightforward. You just join and you run down, I think it's like Lane 8 or something like that, or Area 8, and you just capture a bunch of penguins. Pretty straightforward. When we jump over here, we have Scores of Ores. Scores of Ores is going to give you the Pickaxe Longsword that I'm loving. Again, it's not a, a meta weapon, but it's pretty close, and it, it looks awesome when you use it. We have Chilling Entrance. This is what's giving you the Scarf. You really only need to play it one time. So it's pretty easy. Don't forget to bring a Fluvial Resist for uh, the Valhazak portion of the fight. Uh, what else? By the way, let's see, where is it? Return of the Bioweapon is here. So the Resident Evil event quest has returned, as well as all the high rank uh, event quests from the base game that had uh, layered armor as well. So there's some layered armor you can earn from the high rank events if you didn't get those done. Uh, Into the Frozen Wilds and the, the Survivor are here, of course. This is the Horizon Zero Dawn event that is exclusive to the PlayStation. It gives you the new Stormslinger Light Bowgun. So those are both there. But not everyone's going to be interested in that, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, and then we have Muscle Monkey Madness. This is an awesome new arena quest where you fight two Rei Zhang, not at once, until the middle of the fight. So it starts out with one Rei Zhang, you get them halfway dead maybe, and then the second one joins. And man, it's tough. They're crazy when there's two of them together because you barely ever get an opening to attack. Uh, and once you kill one of them and there's only one left, it becomes much easier at that point. You know, it becomes much more manageable. This is what's giving you the buff body armor set. Okay, so we've talked about the scarf from Chilling Entrance. Here's buff body, right? Uh, and we already talked about the penguin mask from Duffel Duty. And we already talked about the longsword from Scores of Ores. And you know the Oolong set is coming from the, the Joyful Tickets, which you obtain like any seasonal ticket by simply doing the daily bounties uh, and receiving them as rewards at the end of quests. Okay, I think we've covered mostly everything. Uh, there were some additions to the room. I never really get too crazy about the room, so we're not gonna we're not gonna cover those because uh, maybe that's better suited for a separate video. We can have a special meal. The Holiday Joyful Platter, which is giving you Feline Groomer, Feline Tailor, and Feline Insurance? 
Oh, okay, so maybe the daily skill is rotating. Groomer halves the effect duration of defense down and speeds up light recovery. Tailor shortens the cooldown before specialized tools can be reused. That means your temporal mantle. Okay, so we have that special meal going on. Oh, I just remembered. Okay, we're going to jump down and talk to the Elder Melder and talk about the Steamworks. This is kind of a big deal. Let's get over there. All right, here we are in Celiana, and as you know, during any holiday, a lot of things go on sale. Well, there's something new going on with the Steamworks. It's not a sale. There's like new items you can obtain from the Steamworks, and these are related to unlocking decorations, so it's a big deal. All right, so what you'll see on the left in the complementary items, you'll see some new tickets, a gold melding ticket, a silver melding ticket, and a steel melding ticket. What the frick are those? So I showed this off in my live stream. I obtained some of those, and then I spent them over at the Elder Melder, and the Elder Melder has this new thing called Guild Alchemy, and this allows you to trade those tickets in for rolls on decorations. Here it is, Guild Alchemy. You'll choose this. And you basically just turn these tickets in. You can see I spent all of mine, unfortunately. The result, it shows like an icon for the result, but that's actually going to be a decoration. Okay, so this is going to be a decoration. It doesn't look like it's going to be a decoration, but it is. And I actually got good decorations from this. It was fairly fast. And what we know about the Steamworks is that you're able, really, you're able to obtain a lot of fuel for the Steamworks very quickly from, you know, a little bit of farming, using like geologist and all that. And then you go back and you can just rubber band your right trigger and play Steamworks for a long time. So you can obtain a whole bunch of these and then turn them in for a whole bunch of decorations. We're going to have to make a separate video about this because it's so relevant right now. Uh, for people who need decorations like me, I need decorations. And uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Also, I noticed the uh, Elder Melder might have had some new items added to it. Let's go to Meld Items. Correct me if this is new. But this Raytheon Spike Plus, I don't think that was there in the past, right? Rathalos Medulla, I think Rautobahn Medulla is new as well. Yeah, I think they might have added a few new items that we didn't have before. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I could have sworn those were new items that they added the first time I talked to her after the event came out. Alright, I think that's it. Have I missed anything? I don't think I missed anything. No new monsters. We have Safajiva still. Safajiva, I believe he's leaving on like January 4th or something like that. So be sure to get all of your awakened weapons done and, and get plenty of fights with him and get your armor set done with him. Other than that, uh, I think that's the end of this video. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.